Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Uh, today we are going to be looking at a section A, we're going to be looking at a micro paper, we're going to be looking at 2022. So this is the last publicly available micro paper for the Edexcel exam board. The others are hidden um, and are not possible to go through. So this is going to be the last section A until they become publicly available once the 2024 exams are out. As always, I'm going to run through all the theory, I'm going to run through how you answer each question. Um, and if you have any questions, make sure that you pop them in the comments and I will try and get back to you whenever I can. Uh, in terms of this paper, we have 30 minutes to answer each of the questions, uh, all the questions in section A. We'll try and go through them as quickly as possible. And uh, yeah, hopefully there will be uh, nothing that stumps us and I will make sure that everything is answered clearly. So. Disney Plus, question one, is a streaming service that distributes films and television series produced by the Walt Disney Studios. And we can see that they go from November to April 2020, and the amount of subscribers is increasing over time. Ceteris paribus, which means all other things remain equal. Remain equal. The most likely consequence of the above data is that Disney Plus will experience an increase in its, well, if I'm looking at this, I'm either thinking either revenue or profit. And fixed costs, no. Income elasticity of demand, no, it's just an increase in consumers. Price elasticity of demand, no, that if you increase the price elasticity of demand, it means it become more price elastic. Revenue, yes, that makes sense. You've got more subscribers paying the fee to, uh, watch Disney Plus TV shows and films, then it's likely that you're going to be making uh, more revenue as long as you're not reducing your price to do so. And we know that they're not because it says Ceteris Paribus. Draw a supply and demand diagram to show the likely effect of the change in the number of subscribers and the market equilibrium for Disney Plus servers. Okay, so nice and straightforward. We need to label it price and quantity as it's a demand and supply diagram. We should have our demand curve like so. It doesn't matter about the elasticity of it. And supply curve like so. And we have our original equilibrium. We'll leave it at Q1 and P1. Because there's an increase in the amount of, sub um, of subscribers, the demand has increased. The demand has increased at each price or at a given price. And so we can see this outward shift of demand and we need to draw our new equilibrium point, P2 and Q2. They haven't mentioned price, so it can't be a movement along. It's an increase in the number of people who are using it, so it must be an increase in demand. And that's all we need to do. We don't need to draw arrows. Um, yeah, there's, there's no need for that. Okay. So table below shows data on the drinks market in Chile in 2017, the PED for sweetened drinks and the XED cross price elasticity demand for bottled water in response to a price change in sweetened drinks. Okay, so the price of sweetened drinks increased, increased by 5%. Ceteris Paribus calculate the percentage change in the quantity demanded for sweetened drinks. You are advised to show you're working. Okay, so let's just do that then. So we can put in our formula, percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. And we can fill in what we know. So we know the PED for um, sweetened drinks is minus 1.37 is equal to percentage change in quantity demanded, what we're figuring out, divided by 5%. Then we can just mix that all together or multiply that, rearrange the formula by multiplying that to get over here. So minus 1.37 times 5% equals the PED. And if I put that into my calculator, you can just ignore uh, the percentage signs in one, minus 1.37 times five. If I put that in, I should get minus 6.885%. Okay, um, and there, there is a range, but make sure that you're using the figures that are given to you. The price of sweetened drinks increases by 5%. Ceteris Paribus, calculate the percentage change in the quantity demanded for bottled water. Your advice should you working. Okay, so XCD, we need to put in the formula again. It's the percentage change in quantity demanded for a good, let's call it A, 
divided by the percentage change in price for a good, let's call it B. Now, the price of B in this case is going to be sweetened drinks. And we want to know what the change in the quantity demand for bottled water is. So we can just follow the same thing that we have done previously. Fill in what we know. We know that the XED is plus 0 0.63. And we know that the percentage change in quantity demanded is unknown. But we do know that the price of sweetened drinks has increased by 5%. Again, we move that over by multiplying. So we get in this space here, I'm going to put it plus 0.63 multiplied by 5 is the percentage change in quantity demanded of bottled water. And therefore, the answer will be 3.15%. Uh, there we go, job done. Using the data on page 4, which one the following is most likely? So... If there is a cross price elasticity of demand like 0 0.63, it means that when the price of something increases, the quantity of one good, the quantity demanded of the other good is increasing. So in this case, if the price goes up of uh, sweetened drinks, then the quantity demanded of bottled water actually goes up. And that suggests that there's substitutes. People are swapping in between those two drinks um, whenever there's a price change in one of them. So immediately I can get rid of the complements, these two here, go away. Now I'm left with either B or D and a decrease in the price of sweetened drinks will have the following effect on revenue. Okay, so we need to look at the PED of, of sweetened drinks is minus 1.37, which means it is elastic. Anything less than minus one or greater than one is elastic, anything uh, greater than minus one or less than one is inelastic, which means that if I decrease the price, it means more people are going to buy it. It means that the revenue is going to increase, which means that the answer is D. Okay. A company that provides drinking water and treats wastewater has been fined 180,000 after an incident that killed about 2,500 uh, 2, fish. The charges relate to an illegal discharge of sewage from the wastewater treatment plant that polluted nine kilometers of the River Severn, a popular tourist destination. Draw an externalities diagram to show the likely impact of the sewage charge on the local tourist industry. So straight off, that's a negative externality production. Um, it's the company's fault that they've been polluting the, lake, uh, the river. Um, it's not a positive externality of consumption, which is the other externality you need to know about. So when you get a negative implication from whatever source it is, you know basically which diagram you're likely to draw. To draw sorry. So we're going to put costs, benefit here, and we can put quantity on the x-axis. You can draw, start by just drawing your demand and supply curves like you usually would. This one is marginal private benefit is equal to marginal social benefit. And this is our marginal private cost. That's the cost to the producer of making one unit of those good of that good. Um, and this is going to be our free market quantity and our free market price, as in the government or whoever. This is what the um, allocation of these goods would be if there was no intervention from the government or regulators or whoever else might try to resolve the externality. Because there's some form of uh, cost which isn't associated with the production, it means that the marginal social cost, the cost of society, is greater, you can see the distance between these two, than the, the private cost of the firm. So this represents the externality. Now, we can draw in our socially optimum price and our socially optimum quantity. So we want to reduce the quantity here because they're polluting and yeah, it's bad. And so we want to reduce the amount that this company can, uh, can produce to offset the externality of the pollution. What I want to do is make sure I show, I can show the externality, which is this triangle here.
your externalities, your negative externality triangles should be pointing to the left and your positive externality triangle should be pointing to the right. And you can see here that it is indeed pointing to the left. There we go. Which one of the following is the most likely effect of the £180,000 fine? It is to reduce external costs. Um, as you can see there, because it is getting rid, okay, so it's not increasing market failure, it's helping to reduce the production um, and the money should, will be used to help clean up the lake most likely um, or the river. Increased profits of water company is wrong because they're not going to make profit, they're being fined. And reduced government failure is wrong. It's got nothing to do with government failure. Um, so, yeah, the final answer is C, reduce external costs. Okay, Pilgrim's Pride is the second largest chicken supplier in the US. It will pay a 107.9 million fine for price fixing with Tyson Foods and other chicken suppliers. The firm limit, firm's limited production to force prices higher and harm major customer, customers, including KFC, Pilgrim's Pride is thought to have gained at least $361 million in total revenue from the collusion. Draw a simple two-firm, two-outcome game theory model to show why the chicken suppliers may have colluded, because they want to make more profit. That is, in essence, why they have colluded. Um, it will be tacit collusion. They won't be saying, yeah, we're colluding. All right, let's do this. Let's draw, firstly, a better square than what I was about to draw originally, or rectangle even, I should say. And connect the dots like so. And then we can draw a little rectangle. And then in order to show the payoff matrix, we can cut the two lines like so. Okay, and then we should make it appropriate. So we can have high price, which is ultimately what they're going to be charging. High price, low price, which they don't want to be charging because they make less money. They want to make sure that they are making as much as possible. Um, and then I make them relevant to Tyson Foods um, and Pilgrims, which is the other Pilgrims Pride. So that is the start of our payoff matrix. Let's make it appropriate to how much money they make. Pilgrim's Pride is thought to have at least 361 million. Okay, so I'm going to make Tyson into orange and Pilgrim's I'll leave as black. So they made 361 um, and Pilgrim's also made 361. And let me add in revenue here as a key and that's going to be in million of dollars. So we know that that is the case. 361, 361. If uh, we move down to Tyson charging a low price and Pilgrim's Pride charging a high price, we just need to make sure that the two boxes in uh, this square here are less than the sum of the two boxes in our original one. So in the original one, it's 722. Um, so we can do something like, let's say, um, if they charge a low price, um, they're going to get more customers, sorry, because chickens are probably price elastic. So let's say they get make 500. Change this again, sorry. They make 500 here and they make 200 pilgrims because they charge a higher price, 200 million. Um, and then I can do the same thing, but just in the other box, so I can say they make 200 if they charge a high price and pilgrims will make 500 million if they charge a low price because people still buy them. And then I can finish off by putting in two more here. So 300, let's say this is just random numbers and 300 in here. And what that shows me is that the most, uh, the best strategy where they make the most money collectively is when they both charge a high price, 722 versus 700 or 600 if they both charge low price. Hence why they will have the incentive to collude. Okay, which one of the following is most closely associated with tacit collusion? This is not spoken. Tacit means like hidden um, compared to overt, which means that overt is wrong. 
predatory pricing is wrong. Price wars is wrong. They don't have price wars. They will be colluding on the price and predatory pricing is wrong. They're colluding on the price. They're not going to try and get rid of other competitors within their market. Unspoken agreements, it's not spoken. It's just a synonym for what I just said and therefore is the only correct answer. Okay, question five, the last one. The makers of Fiat cars merged with the makers of Vauxhall cars in 2021. Fiat management had aggressively sought a merger to achieve economies of scale. The competition authorities in the EU investigated the merger because they're probably worried about the impact on consumers. Which one of the following best described the merger of the makers of Fiat cars and Vauxhall cars? Well, they're pretty similar in nature. Um, as in, they're not at different points in their, their um, production process, um, which means that vertical is not correct. Um, forward, neither forward nor backwards is, is correct because they're not different parts of the production process, they're the same parts of the production process. And organic growth is wrong because organic growth is when you don't grow by purchasing other companies. So the only correct one is horizontal integration. They're at the same stage of their production process and that's what the merge happened. That's what's happened in the merger. Explain one type of internal economies of scale that the newly merged car company may achieve. Um, okay, so they could achieve technical economies of scale, E of S, that's what I'm going to put. Um, because of the sharing of technology, each company has access to. Okay, but you could have other types of economies of scale. You could say financial, which means that they can get uh, lower cost for borrowing. You could say uh, marketing because they merge marketing teams and so they can spend less of their overall fixed cost of marketing. Explain one likely concern the EU competition authorities may have had about the merger. Most likely, they'll be concerned about the consumers um, and the price that they're going to be charged. So. Uh, EU, the EU competition authority may worry about consumers and higher prices due to to market share or a lack of lack slash or less choice to consumers because maybe they stop producing certain cars or maybe they yeah because maybe they're not as uh, they don't generate as much revenue or profit to the company so they stop the production of something in order to become as to make as much super normal profit as possible. Okay, so that is the end of section A. Um, I hope that you found that useful. Um, and if you have any questions, as always, put them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Use this as a revision guide. Hopefully, if there's anything that you're unsure of, um, this helps to clear out some of the, um, clear up, sorry, some of the maybe gaps in your understanding especially this kind of uh, drawing where you have to do the matrix. I think it's really helpful to see someone do that. Um, but yeah, I hope that's been helpful. Please like it, subscribe, it helps the channel out, and um, I will produce some more videos in the near future and move on to some section Bs as well. As always, thanks very much, and uh, good luck with your revision and your economics learning. Bye-bye.